Hello everyone and welcome back to the video. As most of you might know, there's been a massive patch for Age of Empires 2 that just dropped, changing a ton of different civilizations, introducing new techs, and completely changing up the meta. In this video, I'm gonna go ahead and cover the top five most buffed and most improved civilizations from that patch. Civilizations that were considered pretty bad before, but definitely got a huge boost from some of the changes and some of the buffs that they received. Before I show you guys the list though, I'm gonna go ahead and give a quick shout out to my secondary channel, Hera Gameplay on YouTube. If you enjoy high level one view one a we two content highly recommend you check out that channel i post a video of me going up against a top player every single day and there's no clickbait it's exactly what you want and we're very consistent with the videos all right without further ado let's go ahead and hop right in and take a look at the top five most improved civilizations Starting up at number five, I've got the Sicilians. Now the Sicilians got a couple small nerfs, but the vast majority of their changes were positive. So I'll start quickly by talking about some of the negative changes. Firstly, their castles now build only 50% faster instead of 100% faster. And their first crusade spawns only five units per town center instead of seven. However, the cost of the upgrade was also lowered. So it's hard to tell if it's a nerf or not. It just feels like a change. But anyways, those are the only two things that can be considered negatives. What is a positive though, or what was buffed was quite crazy. So firstly, the biggest change in my opinion was the fact that the dungeon now acts as a barracks and it lets you train spearmen from the very building. So now the dungeon lets you make sergeants, lets you make spearmen and acts as a defensive tower. Not only that, but counting as a barracks means that if you make a dungeon, you could then make an archery range or a stable freely and you can completely skip out on the barracks for that early portion of the game. This is a really important change for the civilization because it lets them get away with some really crazy opening strategies. For example, if you've watched my quick Sicilian tip video on YouTube, I showcased how you can go up to Fuel Age really fast at like 19 pop, make a defensive dungeon, which will defend your wood line or your berries, and also let you get some spears out. And because it counts as a barracks, you can then just make the stable right after it. So it gives you a really solid defensive structure and it just lets you get a stable or a range follow up so you get to save that 175 wood and not have to invest into that barracks early on. The ability to make spears lets you defend your base as well against scout rush. The fact that it's a tower lets you defend against other archer units or if you're defending against men at arms it really helps out a lot. And the cherry on top is that because you start with that extra 100 stone you can make the dungeon and you can still afford a town center once you get to the castleage. So it's a really smooth build and it basically has no downside. Another small buff for the Sicilians is that now their farm upgrades give 125% more food instead of just 100%. So this is a small change, but hey, we'll take the extra food on our farms and it just makes horse collar and heavy plow that much more crucial to pick up as the Sicilians. So honestly, pretty solid changes for the Sicilians and I'm really excited to see what the civilization can do going forward. All right, next up on the list, I've got at number four, it's going to be the Incas. Now the Incas got some really cool changes as well. However, they're a little bit more nuanced than they might seem at first glance. So their big bonus that really skyrocketed them to the top of the tier list is the fact that their military units cost minus 15, 20, 25, and 30% from dark feudal cast on imp, less food. So you save on a ton ton of food throughout the game for a bunch of different units. This bonus will affect their eagles, their slingers, their kamiukes, their skirmishers, their militia line, their spear line. A ton of military units are benefiting from this cheaper food or this food discount and it's quite a hefty discount at 30% in Imperial Age. Just to give you guys a quick point of reference, if you take a look at something like the Byzantines, their spears and skirms cost minus 25% and although that counts for like food and wood and this is just food, it's pretty comparable in some way ways considering this is affecting a ton of different military units. The way I see this bonus is that it's going to really help Incas with their flexibility and allow them to access the different tools in their arsenal. Incas is already a civilization with a ton of different options and so having this bonus to explore those options and to be able to invest into those different options that is just going to make the Civ a lot more scary and a lot more flexible to play. Incas at number four definitely. Moving on to number three though we've got a fan favorite, the Goths. This civilization has been waiting for a proper buff for so long and it's gone through a ton of changes over time, but none of the changes really got me excited until this one. Now the Goths are such a strong civilization right now in the early game. You basically have a double eco bonus. You have the loom that can be researched instantly, which basically puts you ahead one vill compared to your opponent. It also means that you're going to have a really smooth start. No way to lose a villager to a boar because you got loom. And also the new 
new bonus on top of that now is that their hunt lasts 20% longer. And on top of that, of course, their old bonus is that hunters carry plus 15 meat and plus five attack versus wild boar, which is not that important. But the main part, the new part is that hunt lasts 20% longer. What does this mean? That means that if a regular deer has 140 food, if you're hunting it as the goths, you get 140 plus 20% of 140 into your stockpile from that deer, or it takes longer to hunt it because it's got more food, but you'll eventually get more deer out of it. This is comparable to the Tatar longer lasting sheep, but sheep isn't as good a food source as hunt. And longer lasting hunt means more resources in the bank because hunt gathers so quickly compared to sheep. And so this bonus is incredibly important for the goths, lets them be really aggressive early on with scouts, with spears, with men arms, really with whatever they want to do to spend that food. I honestly think that this is enough of a bonus to push goths up until like the upper mid tier on 1v1 Arabia. And I predict that we're going to see the sieve everywhere in King of the Desert 5. There is a small downside that infantry for other civilizations got buffed. However, Goth's infantry is still really strong up against other infantry civs. So I don't think it's really that big of a problem. And I think Goths are now in a really good spot for the meta. Really solid early game. They're notoriously strong late game. And the mid game might be a little awkward. However, with a strong early game, it's up to you to get some damage done and set yourself up to coast through that mid game. All right, that's going to be number three with the Goths. And we're going to hop into number two now. At number two, we've got a civilization that I honestly debated putting at number one. It was really close to the number one civ, but I decided to leave it at number two, and that is going to be the Malay. And the Malay only really got one bonus, but it's such a big bonus that I thought it's just skyrocketing the civ to the top tier now, and that is the fact that they get infantry armor upgrades for free. Now, when the civilization gets upgrades for free, that means that it's researched instantly upon getting access to that technology. So for example, as soon as you get the Feudal Age, you don't need to make a blacksmith, you will right way get the infantry armor and so your two militia rush in the early game will be that much stronger your meta arm rush will be that much stronger and then moving on towards the late game you're gonna have all that saving for your infantry not to mention that quick transition because the techs come in instantly really strong bonus and makes the civilization incredibly dangerous as a little cherry on top they also get access to the new tech gambesons which will boost their two-handed swordsman in the late game and give them an extra pierce armor so now your unit that doesn't cost gold once you get your unique tech will now have extra pierce armor making it a nightmare for civilization to deal with when they also run out of gold. Malay is going to be super dangerous in the upcoming meta, and I honestly feel like it might be borderline OP, but we'll see what comes from it. Really excited to play the Sith though. All right, before I show you guys the number one civ, the civilization I believe to be more improved than the Malay, I'm going to go ahead and run through some honorable mentions because we got a few on this patch. For starters, on our honorable mention list, I've got the Spanish. Spanish got a small buff, but it's pretty reasonable. They get 20 gold back every time they get a research or get a technology. Note that this doesn't count for Feudal Age, Castle Age, or Imperial Age, but every other tech in the game is fair. And so that leads to a lot of savings. It leads to a lot of cool plays like getting bloodlines without mining gold. You know, you can get 20 gold back after you get loot. So it basically costs only 30 gold, which is pretty neat as well. And so, you know, Spanish are a pretty good spot, even though the Conquistador got nerfed a little. I think it's still in a pretty good spot and it's a reasonable buff for the Civ. Next up on honorable mention, we've got Celts. Celts also got a really big buff with their Wood Raiders getting some extra stats, plus one attack, plus five HP, making their Wood Raider quite deadly. I expect to see a lot of Wood Raider plays because it was already a good unit before, but now with those extra buffs, it could actually just be a great unit. And Celts have a strong economy. They really just lacked a power unit that's not halb or siege and wood raider might fill that role so keep it out for the celts really strong bonus there and then of course the last civ on our honorable mention list is the vikings vikings got a couple reasonable buffs and i honestly feel like it's going to be a pretty solid civ in the late game i still think it has some weaknesses you know in general but some of the buffs they received are quite nice i'll run through a few of them right now because they got a lot of changes basically they got a unique tech that gives their arbalest plus one attack which is pretty big and then they also got a change to their berserks giving the Berserk's extra stats and more health regen right off the bat. They don't need to wait for Berserker Gang to kick in. And lastly, you also get a small trickle of gold that comes in from the Chieftain technology because now if you kill villagers, monks, or trade with your infantry, you get some gold back depending on the unit you kill. So pretty cool changes to the Viking and I, I think overall it's going to be a nice buff to the Civ, but it's not going to make it top, top tier or anything. I think it's just going to be that nice quality of life changes for the Castle Age onwards pretty much. Before I show you guys number one though, I want to quickly shout out all the civilizations 
civilizations that got gambesons. It's a pretty important new technology and a lot of the civilizations that got access to it will be slightly stronger. However, I don't think gambesons alone is enough of a buff. Even if you're a pure infantry civ or like a really top tier infantry civ like Burmese or Aztecs, getting access to this tech is very nice. But like I said, I don't think it's enough of a buff to really like skyrocket the civ or make the civ that much more crazy or anything like that. It's just going to be another really good option in late game and it could end up being their go to option. But because it only really applies to like late game plays, like you're not going to go like fast up longsword gambus and rush. That's going to die to crossbows. But champions with gambesons in late game, those are pretty scary. So just going to quickly shout out the civilizations that got gambesons. They will be stronger, but nothing too insane. All right, so enough stalling. The number one most improved civilization from this new mega patch is the Malians. And I'm really excited to play them myself. They once again only got really one big bonus, but it's such a massive bonus that in my opinion, it warrants the number one spot on the list. I think the civilization easily shoots up to top five Arabia civs. And the bonus they got is basically your villagers drop off 15% more gold. Now, what does this mean? This means that if you mine 10 gold, when you drop off that 10 gold, you're going to drop something like 11.5 or like 12 gold and you only mined 10. So this means that you're gathering resources faster and your gold mine will give you more gold than what's written on it. So if the gold mine writes or is written 800, you're actually getting 15% more than 800 when you finish that. But it's not taking you longer to actually mine it. You're mining it in the same speed as another sieve. You just get more gold out of it. So this is a massive bonus. And if you combine this bonus with the fact that their uh, wood buildings are cheaper, you can see how this civilization will get completely nuts and completely off the charts. That's going to do it for the video, guys. Hopefully you guys enjoyed it. This is the top five most improved civilizations after the recent patch. Let me know what you guys think of the list. If you guys agreed with what I had in mind, this is my very initial reaction. So things can change over time. But this is where I'm at right now after the initial testing. Thanks so much for watching the video. Leave a like, comment and subscribe if you enjoyed it. And I'll catch you guys in the next one. Stay safe and peace.